Monroe Regional Airport, and The Gallery presents A Taste of Cinconi. I'm Don Cinconi, professional artist. Did my first schooling at Carroll High School, from there to Southern University, U.S. Army, and spent time in Europe. There to San Francisco, New York, worked in fashion design. Went to Los Angeles, worked as a professional painter. I paint, I create to rid myself of the pain. Pain is my tutor. Pain drives me. I feel the idea, I hear the idea, I see it like a flash, and until I act upon that idea, there's a kind of inner pain that I have. And as I work to do what I'm led to do inwardly, then that pain lessens and lessens. I don't finish any work of art. The work finishes itself. My responsibility as the artist is to listen within me and that first idea that I saw, I can't no longer see it, but the feeling that I had at the time that that illumination came to me, it stays there. That becomes as if it were a reservoir. So I keep going back to that, referencing it as I look at the word. When that feeling coalesces with the image that I am developing there, and it has that kind of harmony, and I feel that. I feel perfect peace. Can't remember when I couldn't draw. I didn't have passion to draw. Everybody drew. Art was esteemed in one form or another. We actually had time for drawing. We did singing, we did drama. I didn't know all of this with art. So I didn't have any comparison with any of that. Then when you think about little kids, all little kids love to draw. And given the chance, they will do it. It just happened that I didn't stop. The universe, the world, Inspiration is everywhere. Inspiration is really coming to all of us. The problem is we aren't listening. The inspiration is coming through the Spirit of God that's speaking to us. And when we pay attention to that, we cannot but be illuminated. Materials are essential. After the idea comes, depending upon the material that you use, and what your ability is to handle those materials. That's where the creative process takes its first root, is in it. So if I'm working with paper, I must know what 100% rag paper can do as opposed to parchment paper with its rough, slick, etc., etc. It's no different with the canvas, uh, wood, uh, metals, or whatever I'm working on. Those objects are saying things within themselves as the artist. Now the student, I must search for that endlessly. Now, what is my style? It's Sinconi. But Sinconi is eclectical. I'm learning from many, many artists. I learned what they did, and I learned that in the same manner in which I learned this language. I copied it. But at some point, it became my way of putting my words together. So in time, my artistic expression, my visual image, you see that throughout all of the pieces that you're showing here, the one behind me, and particularly the strong lines that elongated figures and necks. Drawing anatomically, being absolutely correct, no problem. The portraiture that you see in the room is very accurate. The art of love, the story revolves around this struggling artist and this American artist is played by 
big band guy. James Garner is his agent in Paris trying to market this artist. Elke Sommers becomes one of his models. That's where the love interest comes in. My work was used in that particular film that um, seemingly Dick Van Dyke had done. And that work was selected by a great producer, Ross Hunter. Even though they were, at, they were filming in Paris, part of it's in New York, part of it was also on the back lot of Universal Studios. He said he searched for an artist in all of these places, never found that particular style that he was looking for. Someone told him about Harry Sorcher. Sorcher showed him all of his artists there and particularly the ones that he wanted to be used in that movie. Mine were not in that group, but Mr. Hunter saw my pieces in that particular set. He chose my work and because of its uniqueness in its particular style that's identifiable, once you see it, you know that it's St. Cone. That's what he was looking for in the movie. I got no credits in that film. You won't see my name in there, but you'll see my paintings and you'll recognize it. Where does my style come from? It goes back to Avatar. It comes from very strong expressions of when you said something, you meant it. If they were laughing, and having a good time, you knew they were laughing and having a good time. When they became serious, you knew that too. So my work is coming from the same place. Alto is on Highway 15, a significant bend of Beth River. And it was a steamboat stop for riverboats. Alto was a place where everybody was family and you went from one house to the other they received you you played with the kids and that's where i was born in that wonderful place of alto when my parents were moving us from alto to monroe and to the community called booker t we stopped by a lady's house miss stell and miss stell was like another mom Still hugged me and gave me a kiss and she said, Don't be yourself. And I heard that and I pondered it. How could I be anyone else but myself? I had no notion of what she was talking about, about be yourself. And finding yourself was not a, a statement at that time in my world. Therein lies the root of that inspiration that you're talking about. I did a project for my fourth grade teacher, Miss Anna Jane Washington. And when she saw what I had done, painting of uh, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, she looked at the piece and she said, you are an artist. I believed her, I pursued both of them, and it's out of that be yourself that my style comes out of. Everything that I do now, to some degree, what you see in this room has its roots in that simple language. If you are true to who you are, you will always stay anchored, regardless to what interferes thereafter. And there were many interferences in my life, but I kept coming back, coming back, until I knew what my center really is. As for whether I thought about being a national artist, my boundaries were probably less than a five mile radius that I understood. When I heard my parents talk about my uncles who had gone over the water to fight in World War the largest body of water I knew was Beth River. So I thought my uncle had gone to the west side of Beth River, and that's where the war was going on. 
So, no, I didn't even, I don't think I'd ever heard of that word art for much of that time and had no intentions of much of what has happened to me. But the one thing that I was always certain of before I ever heard the word artist, that's what I was going to be. Find your passion and pursue it. Regardless of what it is, don't value it in terms of money, uh, what fame will bring. That's how I still pursue, and that's how I still encourage others to do that. Do it because you love to do that, and you would get up every day and do it if you didn't receive a penny for it. Select pieces of Don Sinconi's work can be viewed at Monroe Regional Airport.